So what two properties do we already know about parallelograms other than the fact that their opposite sides are parallel? Well, if you recall from our previous video, we also know that the opposite sides are congruent to each other, meaning AB is congruent to CD and BC is congruent to AD. We also know that the opposite angles are congruent to each other, meaning angle A is congruent to angle C and angle B is congruent to angle D. However, that's not all we know about parallelograms. Let's go back to what we remember about parallel lines cut by a transversal. If you have two parallel lines, let's say I extended line AB out to make a longer parallel line, and I did the same thing with side CD. What I want you to focus on right here is that we have these two parallel lines, line AD and line CD, and right now they are being cut by a transversal. The transversal in the top case is line BC, and the transversal in the bottom case is line AD. Let's just focus on side BC. So let's say I got rid of side AD for a moment. As you might recall, when we're looking at two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we know something about their angles. We know that alternate interior angles are congruent. We know that alternate exterior angles are congruent. But what do we know about the consecutive interior angles. If you recall from our previous lesson, the consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which means that their measures add up to 180 degrees. So we know the measure of angle B plus measure of angle C equals 180. What if we were to extend the transversal AD? Again, we have alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, but what do we know about the consecutive interior angles of A and D? These are also supplementary because consecutive interior angles of two parallel lines cut by a transversal add up to 180 degrees. Now let's look at what if I were to extend line BC and line AD as my two parallel lines and observe the transversal to be, for example, line CD. So let's get rid of side AB for a moment. Now we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. What can you tell me about the measures of angle C and angle D? These are consecutive interior angles, which means they are supplementary and their measures add up to 180 degrees. And finally, if we were to extend AB as the transversal, the same applies to angle A and angle B. These are supplementary and their measures add up to 180 degrees. All of these observations can be summed up in a single statement. The consecutive interior angles of any parallelogram are supplementary. There's one final property of parallelograms we're going to discuss, and it has to do with the parallelogram diagonal. So let's start by drawing in those diagonals. So to draw a diagonal, you go from one vertex to another. So I could go from A to C, and I'm gonna put some endpoints there just to show that that's one of our diagonals. And I can also go from B to D. Again, putting an endpoint there to show those are our diagonals. diagonals. Now, what I notice about these diagonals is that they do intersect at a middle point here, and we'll just call that point E just to give it a name. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So what does that mean? Well, if we start by looking at diagonal AC, if E or diagonal BD is bisecting it, that means that the length of AE is congruent to the length of CE. And if we look at the diagonal BD, and we know that point E or AC is bisecting it, then we know that the length of BE is congruent to the length of DE. But why is that? Why is it that the diagonals of every parallelogram will bisect each other? It has to do with creating congruent triangles. So if we take a closer look at our diagram here, we're gonna focus on side BC. I'm actually going to extend side BC out a little bit and side AD. 
So side BC and side AD are two parallel lines. And right now they're being cut by a transversal AC. So when that happens, we end up with alternate interior angles that are congruent. That means the measure of angle BCE is congruent to the measure of angle DAE because alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, what else do we know? Because this is a parallelogram, we know opposite sides of every parallelogram are congruent, which means the length of BC is also congruent to the length of AD, so these are congruent measures. Lastly, if you pay close attention, you'll see a pair of vertical angles. Angle BEC and angle DEA are congruent because they are vertical angles. But now we can make a conclusion about triangle BCE and triangle DAE. These two triangles are congruent to each other by angle, angle, side by angle, angle, side. We have angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So because these triangles are congruent, that means all of their corresponding parts are also congruent. So that means that the length of DE is congruent to the length of BE, and the length of AE is congruent to the length of CE. Therefore, the diagonals bisect each other.